Hello and welcome to this Seven Days of Science special report on the current situation with the Los Angeles fires. I'm Dr Nikki Thomas, a reporter for Seven Days of Science. I also run my own YouTube channel focused on environmental issues, One World. I also happen to be Ben's mum. I hope you enjoy this episode, which covers some of the causes of these terrible wildfires according to the latest science. As I sat listening, horror-struck, to the news about the fires devastating Los Angeles, I wondered why they were happening. Why, in the winter, were fires raging? Surely that only happened in the summer, when it was hot and sunny. But the world's changing weather patterns, due to climate change, means that it is no longer as simple as that. Our warming world is increasing the conditions that are conducive to wildfires. Fire weather days are increasing in many parts of the world, with the fire season lasting longer and becoming more severe. California has seen some of the most significant increase in length and extremity of the fire weather season globally in recent years. Since 1950, the area burned by California wildfires each year has been increasing as spring and summer temperatures have warmed and spring snowmelt has occurred earlier. The stage for this tragedy was actually set years before. Until two years ago, California experienced a decades-long drought and then in the winter of 2022 and 2023, there was a lot of rain. This encouraged the rapid growth of its naturally occurring shrubs, grasses and trees, which are all very fire prone. Last summer was very hot and it was one of the driest starts to California's rainy season on record. And the rain never came, at least to Southern California. California's wet season runs from October to April with most precipitation between December and February. So far, Northern California has seen a bit more rain than usual, but downtown Los Angeles has only received 0.16 inches of rain since October, which is more than four inches below average. Much of the region, including the majority of Los Angeles, San Bernardino, Riverside, Orange and San Diego counties has fallen into moderate drought conditions. This rapid swing from intensely wet weather to dangerously dry, or vice versa, has been named by scientists as hydroclimate whiplash and is linked to global warming. As our world warms up, the atmosphere's ability to evaporate, absorb and release water increases by 7% for every degree Celsius, leading to periods of extreme precipitation and also periods of intense drying of the soil and vegetation. Global weather records show hydroclimate whiplash has increased globally since the mid-20th century. The consequences of this whiplash effect has already been felt in California. After the severe drought mentioned previously, the winter of 2022-23 saw the end of the drought with prolonged heavy rain. As well as providing water for the rapid plant growth, it also caused widespread flooding and hundreds of shallow landslides leading to extensive infrastructure and property damage. As well as having the fuel in the form of shrubs, grasses and trees for the wildfires, the fires are quite literally being fanned by the wind. The Santa Ana winds are dry and powerful, with gusts of 100 miles per hour. These winds occur between September and May, when high pressure over the deserts of the southwestern US and low pressure off the coast of California allows winds to flow east to west through mountain passages in California towards the sea. The more extreme the difference in the pressure, the faster the winds blow. It is well known that when the Santa Ana winds blow, there is a higher fire risk. A study published in 2022 in the International Journal of Wildland Fire discussed this fact and that these winds increase the likelihood that ignitions may spread. The conclusion in the report was that, and I quote, the risk of large fires is reduced after autumn precipitation onset, but may resurge during Santa Ana winds, which provide high-risk weather required to generate a large fire. At present, there is no evidence that the Santa Ana winds have been influenced in terms of frequency or intensity by climate change. However, Santa Ana-like winds occur in other parts of the world, and according to some research, these winds are becoming more common due to climate change. Climate change is also producing hotter conditions 
in places where these winds originate, which may impact their potential to rapidly escalate wildfires. The high winds of the Santa Ana winds have, at times, prevented firefighting helicopters and planes from being able to fly in order to dump water on the burning areas. So the Santa Ana winds are really playing a huge part in the tragedy occurring in Los Angeles. A lack of water in the fire hydrants is also making the situation even more difficult, but this is not due to a lack of water. The reservoirs used by Los Angeles are full. The problem was that demand was four times normal for 15 hours, which lowered the water pressure in the tanks that supply the hydrants. There was then not enough pressure for the water to flow through the fire hydrants uphill. Essentially, the urban system set up to fight relatively small fires is not able to cope with large wildfires and it has led to a strain on local water supplies. The steep terrain is also making it easier for the fires to move rapidly. Sadly, unless we manage to curb our greenhouse gas emissions rapidly, the tragic events seen in Los Angeles will continue to occur around the world. 2024 has officially been the hottest on record, with the average global temperature at 1.6 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, which has passed the Paris Agreement target of 1.5 degrees Celsius. However, one or two years exceeding 1.5 degrees Celsius does not imply that the Paris Agreement has been breached, as the target is measured over a decade or two, but the current rate of warming is at more than 0.2 degrees Celsius per decade, which means that the probability of breaching the 1.5 degrees Celsius target within the 2030s is highly likely. It's therefore imperative that we try our best to work together to reduce the factors impacting this rise in average global temperature and the further climate instability it will inevitably bring. Or extreme natural disasters, such as the one unfolding before us now, will only continue to become more commonplace. If more people listen to and follow the scientific evidence, it becomes more likely that this seemingly overwhelming problem can be curtailed. After all, we've only got one world to call our home. My heart goes out to those of you who have lost loved ones and your homes, and to all the brave firefighters from the US, Canada and Mexico, a huge thank you for the amazing work you do. Please stay safe. If you enjoyed this video, you may be interested in another video about wildfires that is on my channel, One World, which looks into the link between more frequent and extreme behaviour of wildfires and climate change. The link is in the sources.